Hey guys. Hey, uh, we're going to talk about something very bloody today. Hemodynamics. Don't worry. It's not going to be what you thought. It's not going to be the chart of hemodynamic values. It's not going to even be that river pull method. It's not going to even be the where's the wreck method. It's going to be even easier than that. It's just going to take us about five seconds. It's a little bit of a secret, so don't tell anybody else. Hemodynamics coming up. It's going to be fun. Hey everybody, Dennis here with Restory Sensei and today I'm wearing my red lab jacket. Why? Because today we're going to talk about blood and more specifically blood flow and more specifically hemodynamics because that's what blood flow is called. Hemo is blood and dynamics is change or flow. And the real question is, is how do we look at the hemodynamic values, those pesky four values, CVP, PAP, PCWP and cardiac output and figure out where the problem is. When I say where the problem is, we mean where is blood having trouble transitioning? Is there trouble in the right heart, the lungs, or the left heart, or are there other hemodynamic values? Now, I have taught hemodynamics in many different ways. You've probably seen some of my videos, and I'll teach them at more length in a greater video, but I want to just make this one video to show you within just a few seconds how to walk into an ICU room and be able to look at the little monitor and all the little values, and within just a few seconds decide, hey, there's a problem in the right heart, or the left heart, or the lungs, or whatever. So we want to teach you how to do that, and there's a very, very simple way. So this is the simplest of all ways to interpret hemodynamics. So whether you're a respiratory therapist or a nurse or just somebody who works in a critical care environment, watch this. It's going to be a unique way of interpreting hemodynamics. Now, the first thing you'll want to know, this is step number one, you want to be able to assess the values in the right order in which they occur in the blood flow. So the value before the right heart is called CVP. After the right heart and before the lungs, that's called PAP, sometimes M for mean, mean PAP or pulmonary artery pressure. And then the value after the lungs is called the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, sometimes called the PWP for just wedge pressure or pulmonary wedge pressure. And then of course, after the left heart, is called the cardiac output. We all know about that one. Now that's not exactly a pressure, but that's okay. Volume and pressure can be interchanged. So we're gonna look at those four values and just by looking at those, we're going to decide where the problem is. But here's the secret. Number one is you need to look at them in that order. First look at CVP, then look at PAP, then PCWP, then cardiac output. Now what we're going to do when we look at them is we're gonna to have to place a label on them. We're gonna decide, are you high, low, or normal? high, low, or normal. One of those three labels put on every single one of them. And then we'll talk about what's high, what's low, what's normal in just a minute. But then after you do that, then what you're going to do is you're going to look for a certain pattern. So as you go through them in order, you're looking for this pattern anywhere in the system that it goes from high to low or high to normal. Either one of those patterns can be used. All right, and so CVP is high and then PCWP, excuse me, PAP is low, that goes from high to low. What's in between those two things? If you look closely, that would be the right heart and that would tell us that there's a problem in the right heart. Now, before we go labeling things, we do need to talk about some special values. And these special values are going to be different than what you have seen before. In other words, I know that you've probably learned lots of different values in books and those are true. So for instance, CVP, uh, the normal that you would see in most books is two to six millimeters of mercury or four to 12 centimeters of water pressure depending on the unit. And then you got MPAP value and you got the PCWP value and the cardiac output value. But what we've done is engineer some tighter relative values that works just as well. In fact, it works better. And you can use these even on real patients, certainly can use them for tests as well. But so we're going to tell you a different set of normals. The only problem is, is if I tell you a new normal for CVP and you walk into the ICU and you tell a nurse that here's the new normal for CVP, they're going to say you're crazy because they don't know about these. This is your superpower. You might want to even keep it secret. No, go ahead and share. But anyway, so instead of CVP, two to six millimeters of mercury, I want you to learn normal as four to five. In other words, if you see a CVP of three, then you're gonna say that's low. And if you see a CVP of six, you're gonna say that's high. Again, if you tell an ICU nurse that a CVP of six is high, don't let that come out of your mouth. Just think it in your brain. And they go, well, I'm gonna label that as high. But if you tell them that, they're gonna go, what are you talking about? The book says that's normal. Anyway, so we're going to just ignore that for just a minute. So four to five, right? Then when you get to 
MPAP or the pulmonary artery pressure PAP, I want you to use 13 to 15. That means a PAP of 13, I want you to say that's low. And then a PAP of 16, I want you to say that's high. All right, and anything in between, we're going to call that normal. Now, when we get to pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, we're going to use the exact values that we see in most books, and that is 7 to 9. So PCWB of 6 is going to be considered low, 7, 8, or 9 is normal, and then 10, we're going to say you're starting to become high. That's how we're going to label that. Then there's finally cardiac output, and we all know that normal cardiac output is 4 to 8 liters per minute. Mostly, some books say something different. Things are changing now, but generally 4 to 8 liters per minute, we're going to use something very peculiar. We're going to say normal cardiac output is 4 to 7.8. And you're thinking, Dennis, really? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've tested this a million times. We've been doing this for a decade. And it works. That means 7.9, we're going to call that high. 8, we're going to call high. Naturally, anything above that, we're also going to call high. And anything below 4, we're still going to call low. All right. Let's take a practice th at this using our new steps. So as you can see here, you have some hem hemodynamic values. And as we look, we see CVP, we're going to see a CVP of 5, and you're going to think that's normal. Okay, fine. And then you're going to go to a PAP, and it's going to be 17. Now that's high. Now consider this just for a moment. We just went from normal CVP to high PAP, normal to high. Is that the pattern we're looking for? No. We're looking anywhere it goes from high to normal or high to low. So we know PCWP is high, and then we go over to the PC, excuse me, PAP is high. Now we go over to the PCWP, and what do we find? It's normal at a pressure of 7. That's it. We just went from high to normal. So what can we conclude? Well, what's in between the pulmonary artery pressure and the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? And the answer is the lungs. So what we know is that there's a hemodynamic problems in the lungs. Or in other words, the hemodynamic problems that we see, the source is the lungs. Now what's the problem? Well, I don't know. We can't tell what the problem is. We can only tell where the problem is. Now that problem could be that there's lung disease, could be pulmonary hypertension, all those little vessels that are trying to go through the lung, what we call the pulmonary vasculature. Somehow blood is being impeded and not flowing through those very well. It may even be a clot somewhere in the middle. It could be a pulmonary emboli. We can't tell, but we can tell where the problem is. And then when we look at cardiac output, we see that it's normal. Well, PCWP was normal. Cardiac output's normal. So there's no problem there at all. There's certainly not our pattern, is there? Okay, well, let's try another one. Okay, in this one, we see that CVP is high, it's 10. So we would say that's high. It's not four or five, it's high at 10. All right, and then we go to the MPAP, or the pulmonary artery pressure, and look, it's at 14. Well, that's exactly normal. That's it. Did we just find the pattern? It just went from high to normal. Remember, high to low or high to normal, either one of those two patterns, just stop right there and look in between the pressures. What will you find? In this case, we'll find the right heart. And so right now, the right heart is the problem. What's the problem exactly? We don't know. We just know where the problem is. Perhaps the right heart is failing. Perhaps the ventricle is flaccid. Perhaps there's a valve problem. Can't tell, but we can tell that the problem should be focused upon in the right heart. All right, let's take a look at another one here. All right, in this case, we have CVP that's normal. That's pretty good. And now we look at PAP, and it's high. Now be careful here. That's not the pattern we're looking for. We just went from normal to high. That's not it, is it? So what we do, we just keep, we know there's a problem, but we just keep going down the line, right? So we look at PAP is high, and then PCWP is also high. See, it's not 7 to 9. It's above that, so it's high. Now we just went from high to high. Is that the pattern we're looking for? Nope. So we just keep going. Sure enough, we look at cardiac output, and it's 3.9. So we just went from a PCWP that's high to a cardiac output that's a low. Is that the pattern we're looking for? Absolutely. That just went from high to low. So what's in between those two values? Well, the left heart is. So we can conclusively say there is some kind of problem impeding blood flow through the left heart. What is it? Who knows? It could be mitral valve prolapse or stenosis. It could be that the left heart is just failing. The, the, the left ventricle is just flaccid and there's no muscle there anymore. We don't actually know, but we do know the problem is in the left heart. Now, those are the three problems that you could have because you either have a right heart problem, a lung problem, or you have a problem in the left heart. However, 
Let's take a look at another set of values because there's another couple of types of problems we need to be aware of. All right, so when we look at those, we look at all of these values. Now, as you label them, look at this. Uh, CVP is high. Okay, we're on guard, right? But then PCWP, excuse me, PAP is also high. And then the PCWP is also high. And then cardiac output is also high compared to our normals. Well, there's no pattern that we're looking for there, not the ones we're looking for anyway. It just went from high to high, high to high, high to high. That's not the pattern we're looking for. But there is a problem, and you have to think about this just for a minute. If all of the pressures are high, all of the fluid pressures are high, consider this. The problem is likely that there's too much system fluid. And that means all the pressures are high. This means the patient has hypervolemia or they're overhydrated. So the answer here is to dehydrate the patient, give them furosemide and cause diuresis to happen or any other kind of what we call a loop diuretic that just pulls fluid off the body in general. All right, but now with that in mind, let's take a look at this these set of values. And when you put the labels on them, what you'll do is you'll realize that they're all low. Now, this feels kind of familiar, but there's no problem with the right heart, the lungs, or the left heart because the patterns are low to low, low to low, low to low. Well, that's not a problem at all, is it? It is a problem, but not with those structures. Now we're looking at too little fluid in the body, whereas when they were all high, we were talking about hypervolemia. Now they're all low, and we're talking about hypovolemia, too little fluid. This patient is dehydrated, and if significant enough, then this could be deadly. And so the first thing we need to do, well, we need to start fluid, any fluid. Just get an IV bag and start going for it. After that, of course, we'll need to assess, do they have enough blood? Perhaps they need some blood given to them. Maybe they were in surgery and now they're hemorrhaging internally, they're losing blood, or they had a car accident and they're losing blood, so they all be low. But we don't really care why at this point. We just want to start fluid and make sure their pressures come back up. That'll save their life. And then, of course, after that, we can start looking for the major problem. So it is a simple as that. So if you walk into an ICU patient and you use the system, remember to use our tighter normals. Those are special engineered normals that are for relative consideration. And if you'll go through in the right order, wherever you find the pattern, high to low or high to normal, whatever's in between, that's the problem. I hope this has been helpful. I'm Dennis from Restoration Sensei. If you like this and you like this type of way of learning, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. But don't forget also to hit the notify button so that you know when videos come out. We put videos out every single week. If you want to know about them and want to keep up with us, hit that. Also, let us know how we're doing. Leave a comment. Also, let us know what you'd like us to talk about. We're always happy to do that. We'll see you later.